invitation. I am honored not only at the greatness and the depth and the power of this church, but this is the church that God used the church, the people, and the pastor uh, to resuscitate this little ghetto boy from 918 Everest Street, Theodore and Novella's crazy son. <laughs> Yo, y'all didn't have to laugh that hard. And when I came here, none of that was right on the screen. I think, yeah, so look at what the Lord has done. Let's give God praise for just a powerful church. I know people like to give their life to Jesus, but they got a problem with the church. But I'm a witness that the church still works. And I am indeed indebted to my pastor, my friend, my bishop. His hand in friendship and his leadership um, has been transformative personally to my life. Oh, what a difference a meeting in Denny's can make over 20 years ago. I know they got, we got first watch now, but all, all we had was Denny and the Grand Slam. I wish I had some Grand Slam folk up in here. A Grand Slam with a little extra bacon and a little jelly on the toast will change your life, Bishop. I'm so thankful um, for you just allowing us preachers to come in and develop and grow. Come on, let's give God praise for my homiletical and hermeneutical hero, none other than the living legend, Bishop. Come on, you could do better than that. He's still my pastor. I'll cut a Negro right now. I mean it. I cut a Negro. Love you from all my heart. And, and he's got the crew, my fam. Let me tell you something, people. God will give you what you don't have if you come to church. Let me say that again. I'm already preaching. God will give you what you don't have in terms of relationship if you come to church. And I'm thankful tonight. I have my brethren here. Uncle Lee is in the building. Another living legend. Come on, talk to me. We got him in prayer. Lost his mama, but but we standing with him. Got uh, my older brother. Uh, I call him Money Mac. Money Max in the building. We thank God for him. Thank God for my brother, Brother Lawrence. These wonderful preachers of the gospel are here tonight. Also, thank God for the Alpha Worship Center. Can we give God praise for the church that's putting up with me almost 10 years? There's only two churches in the world to put up with Alpha and Sharon. We all here. We all here together. Let's thank the Lord. Now, now, Bishop, in the end of the month, we will be celebrating 110. So, now, Eb, help me. 110. Plus, she's a teacher, she's an assistant superintendent. 90, is that 200? Am I right? We have 200 years of church in this building right now. Maybe the mic is off. We got 200 years of church in here where church has been closed. Can we just give the church a praise? Thank God for the church. I'm so glad we had a mama that took us to church. I know that's right. Meet me in the book of Habakkuk. If you can stand for the reading of his holy word. Thank God for my wife rolling with me. She's already, that's what we call eternal security. She's going to get into heaven just because she put up with me for 30 plus years. Yeah, pray, pray her strength in the Lord. There is yet a word from the Lord. I really believe that the Lord has designed this for us tonight. Pray, Lord, it would bless us. Habakkuk 2, starting with the first verse, Habakkuk 2, starting with the first verse, if you don't know where it is in your Bible, it's 793 in mine. <laughs> what I'm saying is use the, don't, don't be too booze, you're going to use the context, that's all right, go on the index, just figure it out. I will stand at my watch. And, I, and station myself on the ramparts. I will look to see what he will say to me and what answer I am to give to this complaint. And then the Lord replied to the prophet Habakkuk. Write down, uh, the King James says revelation, I'm NIV, I mean the vision, uh, NIV revelation, and make the plane on tablets so that you can hurl it and you may run with it. But for the revelation awaits, it's for an appointed time. It speaks of an end and will not prove false. Though it lingers, wait for it. It will certainly come and will not delay. See, the enemy is puffed up. His desires are not upright. But the just shall live by faith. I want to pray on this subject, a strong church in strange times. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. 
a strong church in strange times. Father, bless your servant. Allow this word to meet the people. Lord, allow your servant to understand the assignment. But Lord, I'm nothing if you don't show up in Jesus' name. And let all God's people say amen. Amen. Me and my wife buy things totally differently. When I buy them, I don't want to read the instructions. I just bought the new iPhone about eight months ago. I ripped the box open, tore it, threw the box away. I'm ready to get to working. I just want to know where my contacts are. Can I text and can I talk? But see, Eb is a quite different consumer than me. Before she purchases the item, she does research before she purchases it. Before she gets it, she knows and tries to get every device and mechanism, what it does, how it functions, what's its capacity when it's in trouble. I mean, right now, she has the box of every cell phone that she's ever owned right now in case she has to take it back with some receipts. Now, this means nothing until my phone didn't work. And here it is, my phone froze up on me and I was mad and I was calling. I called, I said, Ed, you, you got to get here and you got to come from your job because my phone ain't working and I need my phone. And she said, see, that's your problem. You only like your phone when it's working. But if you took the time to study, you would know how to function with it when there's a problem. Yeah, you'll get it in a minute. And see, that's the problem with Christians today. We love the church when everything's going well. We love the church when we come down the aisle and somebody puts a sweet $10 bill in our pocket. But the real challenge of your faith, the real challenge of your membership is not how you flow when everything's flowing your way. But the real challenge of your faith is when all hell breaks loose. And the question is determined, did you study enough that you know authentically how to operate when all heck is breaking loose in the church and in your life? Here it is. This text today is tailor-made to teach you and I. The book of Habakkuk is tailor made to teach you and I how do we become a strong church? How do we become strong Christians when the life in the world we're living in is strange? We're in the book of Habakkuk. Some suggest that it's a minor prophet, but it's not minor because it lacks substance. It's minor because of its volume. But what I love and I believe that the book of Habakkuk speaks clearly to where we are right now. If you do not think we're living in strange times, then you need to wake up because these are some strange times. I don't care where you land politically, it's strange. I don't care where you land economically, it's strange. I don't care where you land socially. You have to conclude that we're living in some times and this is what Habakkuk was living in. He It's quite different because most of the prophetic books, the order is God speaks to the prophet and then the prophet speaks to the people. Let me say that again. God speaks to the prophet and then the prophet speaks to the people. But the order is reversed here because now Habakkuk has questions that he wants to ask God. He has one question that I think all of us, if we wrestle enough with Christianity, especially with theodicy, I think all of us have this question, how long? How long, God, before you show up? How long before you come? How how long before you you show up in our lives. That's the question we wrestle with every week. That's the question we wrestle with. Lord, how long will it be before you show and become God? How long will you allow the heathen to rage? How how long will it look as if the bad folk are prospering? I know I'm in the right space. All of us in times of our lives has a Psalm 73 mentality. My foot almost slipped until I entered. Is there anybody here can testify if you keep looking at life without the lens of the church, you'll find yourself slipping and dipping. He asked him the question, how long, how long? The issue he had was with Babylon. The Babylon were raging. Babylon were heathens. Babylon were using their authority. Babylon was out of control. I don't know about you, but this world we're living in is out of control. But the problem 
problem with Keith Bishop Reed was not just with Babylon. Judah start adopting Babylon principles. The rather problem with them was not so much Babylon because Habakkuk knew Babylon was crazy. What surprised him, he never thought the worship church. He never thought the praising church. He never thought the Judah, the, 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 the worshipers of God would adopt themselves to the world and now he's upset how long will we be here and I love it because God never tells him what how when why he just tells him who he is he gives him what we call doctrine he lets him know that I am God I don't need you I'm self-contained I'm not a needy God can I lecture just a minute he's self-contained that means when he creates. He doesn't create out of necessity. He creates out of love. Can I throw myself on the table? I just cleaned the house, Bishop. Cleaned the whole downstairs. Waiting for my wonderful, beautiful wife to walk in. You might have thought I did it out of the goodness of my heart. No, I did not. I did it because I wanted to receive something from her. Because I'm not God. Oh, but God says when I do something, I don't need nothing in return turn. Is there anybody here? No. Y'all not helping me here? He's self-contained. And then he says, but I'm sovereign. I'm sovereign. And let me tell you why I'm shouting here on this 90th church anniversary, because the first time Bishop Reed that I learned about the sovereignty of God was not in a classroom. The first time I learned about the doctrine of God was at the Sharon Baptist Church, where a short little 5'7 black priest with a shag made doctrine sex to y'all not helping me preach and the reason why some of y'all are still here because you had a church that gave you a foundation look at your neighbor say I know doctrine can make me dance okay let me move here some of y'all still shouting off a of Mercedes but I'm shouting on the fact that he's sovereign and that God will do what he said Well then, Dr. Henson, well how do you be strong in strange times? I mean, how do you do it? How, how do you do it when there's wars on top of wars? How, how do you do it when they made a circus out of the political system? How do you do it when you gotta take $250 to go get some milk and bread? How do you do it when you got young folk who won't come to church? How, how do you do it? Just recently, just recently, six months ago, in Jersey, real story, principal got fired because a child identified as a, as a cat and she refused to put litter in the bathroom. Strange times. How do you live? I'm glad you asked. The first thing you got to do is you have to have the right posture. Yeah, you do. It, it, it's right here. He says, I'll stand at my watch. I will stand at the watchtower. What? Even though you're not speaking to me, I'm going to keep coming to the watchtower. Even though there's silence between me and you, I'm going to keep coming to the watchtower. The watchtower in this text was the place for two reasons. One is where you look out to see war. Secondly, it was the place where the prophet went to meet God every morning. Habakkuk said, you might not be talking to me, but I'm going to keep coming to church until you talk to me. Okay, let me, let me, let me throw this in here parenthetically because some of y'all looking at me. See, some of y'all miss too much church to be church folk. I wish I had it. See, we got to go back to the grandmama with the peppermint in the pocket. I'm talking church before it was teen church. I'm talking church before it was Sunday school. Sunday school was you sat next to your mama and you ate that peppermint till the service was over. And, and then guess what? You went downstairs and you had you some chicken. 
You had some good mac and cheese? I wish I had some folk to talk to me here. You had your piece of that nice what? What, cornbread that tastes like pound cake? And you thought you was going home to play with your friends, didn't you? She said, oh, no, no, we got another service. Get back. You got home Sunday at 12 o'clock at night and your friends were like, where you at? I've been in church all day. But now when you look at them, I said, now when you look at them, I said, now when you look at them, aren't you glad you had a mama and daddy that took you to the child? Kept coming to the, here's what that play. If you're not careful, you'll think God suffers from deism. Deism, fancy word, turn the clock and I walk away and I'm not involved with what I created. But her back I said cannot be. I'm going to keep showing up every Sunday. I'm going to keep showing up every Tuesday. I'm going to keep showing up every choir rehearsal. I'm going to keep showing up every deacon's meeting. There's a gentleman who is a little autistic right he lives down the street from us but every time we ride in the morning he's standing in the same place waving his hand every morning you leave it's Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday Friday Saturday I, I, I mean we've rode and it was snow on the ground It's been thunderstorm. Every morning, he shows up to his place. Oh, God. And what I want to be thankful those of you who keep showing up because they don't know what it took for you to keep showing up every Sunday. Some of you almost lost your mind, but you showed up. Some of you showed up in COVID, out of COVID, broke. Is there anybody here that keeps showing up? Look at your neighbor and say, keep showing up. No, tell him again, keep showing up. Because God will turn it in your favor after a while. She showed up. But if you're going to be a strong church in strange times, you got to be patient. It's right here. Write down the revelation. Make it plain on tablets so that I can herald may run with it for the revelation awaits for a appointed time. Wait now. It speaks of an end. It will not prove false though it linger. Wait for it. And it will certainly come. It will not delay. Here with this particular verse we say, Pastor, write the vision down and make it plain. Each one reach one. That's not what Habakkuk is talking about at all. Habakkuk is not talking what is the vision for the church in 2024. Here, Habakkuk, you can tell it. The first thing he says Habakkuk to do, write it down. The same Hebrew word for tablets is the same word that was used for the Ten Commandments stone. If you recall, the Decalogue was given to alter the ethical system of the people of God. It was here where he was trying to give standards and ethics. He's now telling the church here now, write it down. It's not so you can be greater later. It's not so we can all be the kings of, there's a king in you. If I hear somebody else say we're going to be millionaires, I'm going to jack somebody. Because after all these years, we should be 200 millionaires up in this piece. And since you know so much prophecy, how you miss COVID and Trump? 
says the Bible is not talking about that. He said, write it down on tablets so you can make it plain. And if you make it plain, you can run with it because you're going to need it at an appointed time. Meaning that if you don't have patience to wait on God to build your character, my concern with the, what comes after us is the impatience that they possess. People think you got where you were overnight. And I'm tired of your lying testimonies. I'm sick of it. Giving all honor to God and all the saints and friends. I've been running for Jesus all my life. 99 and a half won't do. The devil is a liar. I want to tell my real story. I almost threw in the towel. I almost gave up. As a matter of fact, I did throw it in. God came back, got me in the towel. Pray my strength. Is there anybody here that had to go through hell and high water to be where you are right now? Y'all got to forgive me. As I look back over my life, I'm thankful for the doors God has opened. I'm thankful for the ways God has made. Is there anybody that can testify with me tonight on the 90th church anniversary that God has brought you? There's a book called Pound the Stone. And the whole thing about pounding the stone is that you never break a stone on the first pound. You never break it on the second pound. But he suggests that what breaks the stone is the accumulative times you keep hitting the rock. Whoo, y'all missed it there. And I've come to encourage somebody who has not seen results. I've come to encourage somebody who's been faithful, but God has not opened the door yet. I've come to encourage somebody who's been doing the right things, and you've been seeing God bless everybody but you. But I come to tell you, keep pounding the stone. Keep praising God. Keep lifting him up, because sooner or later, the stone will break, and it won't be what you did this time, but all time. I'm done. I'm done. Gotta have patience. But if we're gonna be what we're gonna be, if we're gonna be a strong church, in strange times, our lives gotta be proof that the church works. He says it right here. He says, what says? He says, See, the world is puffed up. His desires are not upright, but the righteous person, the just, he uses a compare and contrast. He first talks about the arrogance of the world. And what he's pinning down on is this alleged self-sufficiency that we think we have. That's why in this generation, there's been such a fall off. They call it the non-church generation, where they want Christ, but they don't want church. Y'all quiet on me here, but that's fine. I already got my check. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, 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 the reason is because everybody thinks individualistically they're fine. I don't need nobody. I'm self-sufficient. Don't you know self-sufficiency is an illusion? No one under the sound of my voice is self-sufficient. Uh, yes, I am. I got my own car. I got my own house. Okay, you right. But let an accident happen. Let, 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 let a fire burn your house. All of us 
are one storm away. I wish I had some help in here now. All of us, and what God is trying to say, don't act like the world, like you puffed up. See, see, sometimes God saves us so well, we forget how crazy we were. Sometimes God does such a progressive work in sanctifying our lives. We have the nerve to look down on folk that have done the same thing we did. Sharon Baptist Church, your grace is you don't look down on anybody. The DNA of the SBC is the fact that you don't look down on anybody, but you're willing to pick anybody up. So it can't be like that. But our life has to be proof. Proof. The just shall live by faithfulness. Uh oh. See, we like when we say the just shall live by faith. I got faith. I'm converted. I got saved. I gave my life. No, 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 mama. No, 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 my brother. We want to know, do you have faithfulness? See, see, faith means I got saved. Faithfulness means I live what I confess. Faith affects my belief. Faithfulness affects my behavior. And if we want to be effective in this world today, you can't just have faith without faithfulness. God wants to use your life. Oh, I feel like preaching. As living proof that God exists. God wants to use your life to prove to the world that you need a savior and you need Jesus. Is there anybody here who can testify with me that when you look back over your life, God has made your life living proof that you don't have to look any further if God is real. Because when you look on your life and what he's done for you, your proof that God is real. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, you're sitting next to a miracle tonight. If you knew who you were sitting next to and all I've been through, you'll start giving God the glory and giving God the praise. He do, he tells this story. How they're trying right now, in court right now, to have a court case to get God off the dollar bill. The atheists now are raising up because they're trying to take God out of the equation. Sit down just a minute. Sit down just a minute. I sit down just a minute. I, I want to show you now. I, I just wish if I wanted to do anything, Bishop, I wish I could be an attorney if there was one other thing. But I just have a question. Do you mind coming to court with me? Do you mind helping me? Okay, so just sit down. Your Honor, I'm so sorry. Johnny Cochran couldn't make it because you took him up to the Lord. But can I tell my proof? I'd like to submit before you some proof that the church still works and that God is still on the throne. Will y'all help me prove it? I said, will you help me prove it? Oh, here it is. If this, if God has done this for you, I want you to stand and say, I'm living proof. If God ever provided for you when you were down to your last dime, I need you to stand up and say, I'm living proof. Okay, if you were ever sick and needed healing in your body and God healed you, I want you to say, yes, I'm living proof. If you was ever lonely by yourself and he was a brother, a friend that sticks closer than a brother, say, I am living proof. Is there anybody here? 
who can testify that God is living proof. Read, I'm done now. I'm done now. But can I tell my story? Is it all right here? I know he's living proof because Bishop Reed met me at a Denny's. I had scrambled eggs, bacon, and cheesy eggs. He said, I don't know what God going to do, but he going to do something. I walked down this aisle. I said, this aisle. Me and my wife walked down this aisle. Dr. Colonna Roberts was my confirmation counselor. They took me up those steps into that room. She asked me a question. Do you know God? I said, yeah, I know God. I gave God my heart, but I didn't give it to the church. Let me say it on this side. I gave God my heart, but I didn't give it to the church. But I came to Jesus, and I came to the church year after year. Bible study, and I was crazy. Y'all know I was crazy, but look at what the Lord can do. Is there anybody here that's been blessed at the SBC? It's only one way I can close this message. Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Didn't he do it? Ah! Grab your neighbor's hand right now. Grab his hand right now. Listen, the church needs your life as proof. When we grew up, we did it because the pastor said it. Pastor said it, we did it. That's not this generation. No, 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 no. You got to live it, baby. They need you to be authentic. And my, here's my dilemma. See, my kids go around, 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 you know, and they starting to know folk who knew me when. So you can't control who your kids date. And they might date somebody you might have beat up in high school. I'm not saying it happened, but it could have happened. You understand what I'm saying? Chandler comes home one day. She said, Daddy. I said, yes, Mama. She said, why you ain't tell me? I said, tell you what? Why you ain't tell me how bad you was? I said, well, you know, she said, no, daddy, I wish you'd have told me. She said, because knowing how bad you were and seeing where you are now, I know God is real. The answer to this world is not outside this church. It's in the hand you hold. But you got to be living proof. Pray for that hand you're holding right now. Pray. Cause, because silence will make you stop doing no results. Oh, but Father, right now, squeeze that hand. I'm praying this person does not abort the process because God, you are determined whether they like it or not to make them live in proof. Squeeze that hand. Father, thank you that they didn't join another church. Thank you that they stuck and stayed. Thank you. Now, Father, I pray now that you cause the just to live by faithfulness. Now, if you know you live in proof, loose that hand and give God a praise.
as we rest on our feet. There may be somebody here tonight. who has seen in the lives or in the life of someone else that what they used to be and now they see what they are since they have become a part of God's church. And they have seen that they used to stand in another way, but now their posture is right. And they're standing in this way. They used to be anxious and in a hurry, but now they've come to the conclusion by that life that they're more patient than they've ever seen them before. They literally used to see them do certain things and be a part of certain things, but now their lives have just been an ocular demonstration of that, what they used to be, or opposite of what they used to be. They are a living proof that God is real. If you're here tonight and you have seen the lives of others that used to be or used to be, but now they have become something other than what they used to be, that's a witness and a testimony against you in that what he has done for them or that other person, he can do the same thing for you. You're never too far that God's grace can't meet you. You're never so far gone that mercy can't touch you. You're never too deep and down and dirty that his hand can rescue you. David said, he is my light 